and he is foremost yeah. in everything that we do. Amen. Amen. And the Christian's life should reflect that priority. That's it. That's it. That he is first yes. and foremost in your life. That's it. Believers should be rooted in him. The Bible says, therefore now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. We should not only be rooted in him, but we should be made alive in him. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we also should be hidden in him. I want you to know this morning, church, that he is the king. We should also be clothed in his love. The Bible says, by love. How do you know that you're one of his disciples? By love, by this, you'll know that you're one of him. Not only that, but the peace of Christ should be ruling in your heart. That it should make you equipped in every area of your life. Church, I'm talking this morning, he is the king. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the king of Buckingham now. <laughs> where folk have to wait around for generations for someone to die or to pass on for him to take the throne. I'm talking about his throne has been established since the foundations of the world. His throne, his dominion, at least, is both now and forever. And watch this, because he is king that made us run. Right. Mm -hmm. Through him, we became a part of a royal priesthood. I'm talking about he is the king. We who once were dead to our sin nature, we were made alive through the king, Christ Jesus. And when we look at this chapter, it's Paul expresses about his preeminence. When you look at the grammar over there in verse 18, Church Webster defines preeminence as the quality of being more important than the other. John said, they thought John was the answer, but John said, the one who comes after me. I'm not even worthy to tie his shoelace. When we talk about his preeminence, that means that Jesus is preeminent. That it starts with him and it ends with him. In other words, church, he is first in everything. He's first in importance. First lady, he's first in honor. Yeah. He's first in exaltation. Yeah. And in the grammar of this word, Paul is illustrating that Jesus is the head and the beginning and the first born. Yeah. In all of that, for the purpose that Jesus might be the preeminent one. Yeah. Jesus is preeminent over all creation. Amen. Paul makes it clear, he says that Jesus is more than man. Right. And therefore, Pastor, he has a very different relationship to creation mm -hmm. than we do. He is the image of God in the flesh. He is the king. In other words, one writer said, Jesus is the center of my joy. He's not just the center of my joy, he's the center of everything. Yeah. He is the point from which all things are directed and to which all things 
a human being without Jesus. Much less how to be the church without Christ. Paul emphasizes three important things in this chapter. He emphasizes the divinity of Christ and he emphasizes the saving mission of Christ. That he came to save that which was lost. He didn't come to save the 99 that was saved already. He came, my brother, to save that which was lost. He came to save you. That's right. Man. And he came to save sinners like me uh -huh. who would hold their way to a burning hell. Oh, but yeah. one day, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I met the King of Kings. Right. He also, he's, like I said, he's the, his divinity, he came with a saving mission. And Paul came, he talked about the preeminence of Christ. He illustrates over there in verse 27 that Christ who lives in us, he is the hope of our eternal glory. That's right, sir. You can't make it into heaven if you have a life without Christ. Amen. When you think about it, church, when you when you ponder your life, you have to ask yourself, what would my life be? <coughs> Without Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Where would I be without Jesus Christ? He's not just the only thing you need, he's everything you need. Mm -hmm. He is the foundation of our eternal life, He is the hope of our eternal life. In other words, Pastor, when those dead come, we may know through Christ Jesus who lives in us has already conquered death. I'm saying that the King of glory living in you is the cause of your hope. That you will enter into the fullness of divine glory if you are to do that. Christ in you is the assurance. Trumping all the evidence to the contrary that you and I, Pastor, and the church will share in the glory that is to come. Lastly, Paul states that through verses 28 to 29, that we proclaim him. We proclaim him. In other words, he says, Jesus Christ, whom we preach, <laughs> warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in whom? Perfect in Christ Jesus. Paul said we proclaim him, admonishing everyone with all wisdom so that we may present every man complete. And Christ. And how do we do that? We do that with the Word of God. We do that by knowing that faith shall not come by hearing her, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. From Genesis to Revelation, it tells us about the King of Kings. It tells us about the Lord of Lords. It tells us about the lily of the valley. It tells us about the bright and morning star. It tells us about El Shaddai. It tells us that he, and only he, is the king. Through the word of God, church, we will tell others, we will tell others about Christ. Warning everyone. And teaching everyone. With all the wisdom that God has given us, we want to present them to God. Perfect, perfect how? We want to present them perfect in their relationship with Christ. I'm asking somebody today, do you know him? Do you really know the man? Do you really know the King of Kings? Do you really know the Lord of Love? Do you really know El Shaddai? Do you really know the Lily of the Valley? Not only is he sitting on the throne, is he sitting on the throne of your heart this morning? The King of Kings is knocking this morning. Somebody needs to open up their heart and let him in. Do you know him today? 
He's not only the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, but He's your way. And it seems like there is no way. He's the one, Brother Larry, that makes it possible when it seems that it's impossible. Aren't you so glad today that you met the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? He is the King of Glory. The Lord strong in life in battle. He is the king. He's my battle axe. He's my way back. He's my life in the sea back. He's my midnight brother. The king of kings. Do you know him this morning? And I know the church has said that he is the king. And besides him, there is no other. I'm so glad, church, that just for me, just for me, some 2,000 years ago, just for me, they took him from just the road to just the road. I'm so my king, just for me, they hung him high, they were stretched in life, just for me. Yes, they put my Savior in the Lord of Two. Just for me. Stay there all day, Friday. Stay there all day, Savior. He got up with all power. I don't know about you, how much you got up.
Don't call him Lord if you're not going to do everything he said to do. Well, bless his name. Bless his name. You've been born with Christ. And you're not your own. And all your thoughts are saying, Lord, what is in my life that does not please you? And when the Spirit shows it to you, God expect you and empower you to repent. Amen. Don't call the Lord unless you can do that. Oh, no, no part time, Lord. Amen. He ain't Lord at all. He's not Lord at all. No, no, no. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. God bless you today. God keep it. You may be seated. Thank our, our preachers for it. Amen. Amen.